Okay, so we'll do this. So Venture the meeting forth. place. Two feuding families were supposed to meet here for negotiations. Oh, is that a sleeping dragon? What on earth? What happened here? This is disturbing. Proceed with care, young master. Did that dragon thing eat everyone? What's this? A rock of some sort? How do you think it got here? Perhaps it fell from the sky, disrupting the proceedings. I don't think that was the case. There's something odd about this rock. Uh, I finally managed to take a nap, and not a minute later, something comes out of the woodwork to poke me in the ass. Figures. Oh, hello there, little humans. Anything I can help you with? Wow! By the gods! Are you a dragon? Oh, I love the dragon. He's He just wants to Very sleep. Very pretty. Maybe everyone just ran away from him. Probably. Actually, I'm an iguana. Once upon a time, I stumbled upon a smokehouse and ate too much bacon, hence my size. He he must be joking. Can I have him. the dragon as a party that, member? That's like that's like a Godzilla like kind of horror <laughs> story of oh yeah I was an iguana and then there was atomic testing going on nearby and well but bacon. What <laughs> the hell, guys? Of course I'm a dragon. What do they even teach you in schools these days? <laughs> so anyway, what's up? Are you the one behind the wanton destruction here? Sure thing, boss. Those dudes with pitchforks came here on their silly wagons right on the doorstep of my home and shouted and argued and made a big stinking noise. I hate when they do that. My migraine starts acting up. So I came out and politely asked them to move. Then they started shouting even louder. There might have been a rock or two, or ten, so I ate them all. Makes sense, right? How utterly vile! I know, the taste was terrible. This cannot stand! Right, young master? Young master? He reminds me so much of Draco. Draco is Every a dragon that talks reminds you of Draco. No, 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 but like, Draco could also camouflage himself as stone and also made fun of the fact that some of his quote-unquote victims tasted really bad. It's just... I love dragons. It appears my employer may have been frozen due to utter terror. Hey, whatever floats your boat, as long as he's not screaming. So, are you going to fight me or something? If not, I'm gonna ask you to leave. It's rude to interrupt a nap like that. Indeed we will. Have at you! What? Wait. Hold on for just a second. Young master? This dragon doesn't exactly strike me as evil. Don't you think he's a rather amiable fellow? He's eaten innocent people! Well, yeah, but it doesn't seem like they were very friendly in the first place. I still say we slay him. That's a rather extreme measure. I'm standing right here, you know. You said that you asked them to move? Yup. I even tried chatting with that fancy tall-hatted fellow. That's how humans denote authority, right? By the size of their hats. Anyway, he wasn't too thrilled. And then they started throwing rocks at you? Usually, I don't mind. This stuff happens all the time. For some reason. Hmm. When the news gets out, people will not take lightly to all this havoc. Yet what happened was a misunderstanding, and there's no need for further violence. I'm not saying what he did was justified, nor that it was reasonable, but allowing both sides to duke it out will end extremely poorly. That is true. Well, what can I say? I can't deny I'm a grouch, boss. I just want to be left alone. Is that so bad? <laughs> In that case, you need to work on your patience, Sir Dragon. What shall you do, young master? Well, we were supposed to negotiate, right? Then we will negotiate. I do not follow. So tell me, 
Did you eat everyone? No survivors? What? No. I'm a dragon, not a pig. I have my standards, thank you. If you're looking for those other fellows, you'll find them in a village over the hill. Short walk, pleasant scenery. Uh, my thanks, Sir Dragon. Let's go, Griffith. The peace talks come to a halt before they even begun. Upon arrival, Kate quickly learns that the noisy event was caused casually crashed by a grumpy dragon. With no other solution in sight, Kate decides to include the dragon in a makeshift reconciliatory meeting, hoping to find a hopefully trilateral solution. <laughs> Thank you for coming here on such short notice. Honestly, we were afraid you'd run away. Nah, don't mention it, uh, sir. Uh, yeah, also, uh, you had some compelling arguments. Excellent. So, we meet here on behalf of Mr. Tag, Mr. Bink, and, well, my name is Bakari. Mr. Bakari, as heir to House Loren, the previous lords of these lands, it falls upon me to pass judgment in the case of for the ownership of these lands. Judgment? What judgment? I thought we already we've already agreed that. Huh? What are you kicking me for? Oh wait, no. Huh? What are you t kicking me for, Tag? What's with the face? Why are you? <gasps> please, please, please proceed. Well then. The dragon should have those lands at this rate. Mr. Tag, Mr. Bing, please proceed with your claims. Negotiations, tutorial, building a consensus. Each party by the table, Tag, Bink, and Bakari, has a disposition counter, reflecting their willingness to reach an agreement from zero to 10 points. Your choices will gain support from certain parties and alienate others. Oh, so do you just have to read it, reach a consensus where everyone either agrees with you or where two parties agree with you more than one or uh, something? To reach an agreement and proceed with the game, each party will need to maintain at least Seven points until the end of the proceedings. Throughout the negotiations, Gwendolyn, Elaine, and Griffith will offer advice, and those tips will often contradict with each other. It's up to you to make the final call. There are also other less ra readily apparent ways to win the negotiations. As such, you'll have to discover those by yourself. Keep your eyes and ears open. Ooh, this is different. Well, it's more land. Oh, sorry, you were saying something, Tag? Nah, just go on. My family has been tending these lands for ages. Ages! I was there when the first huts were constructed, you know? Um, what? Don't you mean your ancestors were there? Oh, uh, yeah, bad wording, sorry. We were there first! I refused to let go of a premium, premium patch of land, be it to my neighbor of a cranky dragon or a, cr or a cranky dragon. Mostly because, well, you know, it's mine. No offense. Huh. Well, M M Mr. Tag, what's your take on this? My grand tells me these lands were hit pretty hard, during, pretty bad during the Crusades. When we moved here from Ratless, it was Rantless. It was just wild, untamed soil. Nobody was around, so we took it as our own. You see, Grandma used to serve up Rantlessian vipers, so she, uh, well, she knew how to tame the land. The Rantlessian vipers? Mercenary company, Fa fabulous poisoners, I'm uh, told, and um, an unsettlingly, unseemly family tradition. Not really a dinner time topic. Still, the land, we cared for it for many, many decades. Imagine my surprise when Tag's family came a knocking, saying we could step aside. Oh, uh, Bink. It was our property, Tag, and you haven't really settled the hottest tract of land. That plot's been wasted out there, no matter how you look at the facts. You left it behind during the Crusades! Meh. And what was the purpose of these festivities? Well, we wanted to settle it once and for all. I guess, yeah. In a sense, I thought it'd be nice to reach an agreement. I mean, we're civilized people, right? We both have a history here. Arguments like these help no one. Like, I don't want to move. Ever. Neither does my family. I don't think that'll change. It'd be nice to have some decision to hold on to. You mean, it'd be nice to validate your ownership. Is what I said. Yeah, somewhat. 
Wait, I don't get it. You weren't willing to part with the land, nor to move out, yet you still willingly organize a celebration, and very specifically to negotiate this issue? Ah, uh, um, well, he clearly wanted to hand it over to me. I think the, uh, the word we should really focus on here is negotiate. And then came Mr. Bakari. Ha ha ha, yeah. It wasn't a pretty sight. He munched a third of our guys. Look, I'm sorry, all right. They were loud, obnoxious, and disrespectful. Why do you people have to scream so much? You think I enjoy eating the fat and the old? Hey, I'm just saying. What's your claim then, Mr. Bakari? Like I said, I just want some peace and quiet. I'm an old lizard, folks. If you leave me alone, great. I'll leave you alone too. I don't care about your shenanigans. But our kids? Oh, but our kids? What about them? <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm afraid it, uh, an uh, imposing gentleman like you would turn into a midnight snack, you know? Oh, turn him into a midnight snack, mm -hmm. you know? Eh. Why are we even talking about this? It's a dragon, and this dragon... Ow! Stop kicking me, Tag! Okay. So take a slow young master, probe them out. Build their goodwill. Remember, judgment does not like haste. Show them what you mean well. Okay, and well, this is a landmine. With or without a dragon in the equation. Tread carefully. Okay, so they're just saying be careful. Bakari is like, hmm. I kind of like number three. Uh-huh, really? I think the two guys are going to dislike it, and the dragon might either like it because he's like, oh, I'm being included in this, or he's going to dislike it because he's like, I don't belong to human, like, uh, civilization standings thing. I don't know. This is taking a long time. I, I think you need to learn more short. first. Okay, I think I need to learn more first. Oh, so Tag liked that. Bink did not like that, Bakari didn't care. Eh? What for? Um, well, it's like we mentioned before, Bink's ancestors were the owners of the surrounding patches of land. When war chased them out, my family moved in. Oh, so essentially Tag is admitting that Bink had been there sooner. Yeah. Well, that was kind of already established. Okay. Both of those were ages ago. It's his home as much as mine. But mostly mine. Still, consider this. It's been generations. Can you really just tell it? all my folks to pack up and leave? We're not some squatters. It's our toll out there, you know? I don't want to move if I don't have to. What? Uh, no shouting. I react poorly to lo loud noises. Okay, so Elaine is like, poor Tag. I wish him and Mr. Bank would somehow meet halfway. Um, what Griffith says... They've lived door to door with the dragon. Shouldn't you address that first? And that fellow Tag has a rather meek guy, isn't he? Very impressionable. Perhaps we could use that to our advantage. So. Let's talk to Mr. Bakari. Yeah, sure. I imagine you're the oldest. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Bakari, any Im additional input? I imagine you're the oldest around here. He likes that. Like I already said. No, he isn't. Huh? Never mind. Huh. Well, anyway, you were correct in saying that I've been around here for the longest. Eh. And truthfully, I've only been using a small portion of the lot for my lair. What do you mean? I'm, tradi I'm a traditionally minded dragon. I prefer a good old spacious cavern if I can get one. What use would I have for ar arable ground? You've uh, eaten some people, though. Can you, you change mean, the voices a little bit more? Uh, for Bakari? Well, oh, Bakari and K. K and Sorry. K is usually supposed to be like, hey. Sorry. Give me back a decent, quiet corner to nap in, and I'll be more than happy not to pick human bones from my teeth anymore. But you prey on our sheep. Nonsense. I'd never do... Oh, oh wait, no. Sorry. <laughs> I, start, I saw we'll start a B. With B. Yeah, that's a problem. Nonsense. I'd never do something like that. Huh? But let me think. Our sheep have been vanishing for a better part of the year. When they do crop up, they appear drained of blood. And that's not you, then. That sounds like a vampire. Eh, I mean, 
I don't know, do dragons drink blood? Not really. We're not big on soup. Any proof of that, though? Oh, Bink is a vampire. Remember how he said he was there? He was there when things were built? Yeah, there are, there are a bunch of vampires. Ah! Oh, that's funny. Really, look at my teeth. Then look at my side. Then I, look again. Because I noticed that he had flubbed about that. He should have only been yeah. the la latest generation. And again. Do I look like the sort to drink blood of sheep? Yeah, let's do the... Uh, well, all right then. So, I assume it's not Mr. Bakari, but why would anyone attack your sheep? <laughs> if you noticed, uh, Gwen was like, blood? Sheep? What? What's going on here? Yeah. Given their usual state, well... Why does a psychopath need a reason? I heard a story about a guy who used to brew marrow cocktails. No reason. All because he was kooky. Why are we even discussing this? Damn it, dragon, not dragon, whatever. How is this relevant to the topic at hand? We were supposed to talk about the contested patch of land. Mr. Bink, why are you being so defensive? I'm not being defensive. This is getting ridiculous. I hope you're not trying to suggest anything, Sir Lauren. Come to think of it, <laughs> you do look rather pale. Have you, uh, have you always been this pale, Bink? What? Yes, damn it. I've always been like this. What are you getting at exactly? Nothing. I just thinking out loud. Really? So, clearly Mr. Bink isn't being at his best here. I wonder what do marrow <laughs> cocktails even taste God like? Goddamn it, Elaine. And he's correct, you know. This isn't why you came here at all. Uh, one or two. Probably two. Okay, sure. Mr. Bink, are you hiding something from me? That's gonna get him to zero. We'll see. No. Huh, you think? Who knows, maybe you seem to be on the cusp of, cusp of discovering something, little human. I wonder. Stop it! I'm way too old to be bothered by your wild accusations, or, I mean... That's why he was questioning whether Bakari was as old as he was, yep. too. Yeah, just stop. Whatever you're getting at is pure poppycock. It serves no other purpose but to irritate me and everyone around. I'm not irritated. Neither am I. Are you done? Can we continue? Okay, so you're both... Okay. So Griffith wants you to press Mr. Bank. It's now or never, or you think he's... You don't... You think he's telling the truth, big bro? I don't think so. Interesting turn of events, but it doesn't entirely click with me. You should look deeper and wider. I like this one, probably. Yep. Look, I don't want to antagonize you. Uh, look, I don't want to antagonize you, but if we were to work something out, we need to trust each other, and you're clearly hiding something from me. Clear... 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 Yeah. Clear... Oh, hey, everyone else is at six. And he liked that, actually. Pshaw, what does that even mean? You spout noise, Sir Lauren. That's just you trying to spin words on a silver. In silver, looking for truths where there ain't none. Uh, eh, uh, Bink? There's no big secret. You have nothing to go on, and there's no need to continue this line of thought. Okay, so Griffith thinks you're onto something. Elaine is like, are you sure about doing this? And let's hope you've gathered enough evidence. So okay. you can just outright say that he's a vampire, but Gwen seems to be saying you need more evidence. Uh, on second thought, I think I attacked. I, I, I uh, want to push it. Call him out for being a vampire. I think you may be older than you look, Mr. Bank. I've had experience with your kind before. I think you're a vampire. Oh. Eh. Eh. Uh. What? What? Oh. Wow. Neat. That's asinine. Asinine. Yeah, normally I'd think so too. I mean, you're right, the idea seems to sound ridiculous, but when you consider all the small signs... Signs? There's only so many times you can correct yourself after using I instead of my family before it either becomes a sign of mental illness or, well, you know. I'm sure there could have been at least some weird things going on that could lend credence to what I'm saying. Like... like sheep being drained of blood, you mean? Precisely. 
Conjecture. Baseless conjecture. You cannot mean this. You don't need to be so defiant, Mr. Bing. Being a vampire is not a crime, and I don't care. This is why I'm prodding you. And you know, this isn't why I'm prodding you, and you know this. However, you've been preying on livestock of your neighbors. Lethally, if I might add. Was it to scare them away? To obtain the land on the cheap? Talk all you want. I've yet to see concrete evidence. It isn't concrete, I'll give you that. But I have a way to be 100% sure. One of my uh, guests is an experienced vampire. A neutral party with no stake in all this, if you pardon the pun. If anyone can judge these things, it's him. If you were brought before him for evaluation, what would his verdict be, Mr. Bink? Uh... Mr. Bink. Well, I might have lived a bit longer than I should, and I might have been bitten by a bloodsucker before. Big deal. I'll take that as a yes. Uh-oh. Bink. But I have never killed a man, nor have I ever plotted to do so. I have my standards. I don't kill men for thrill or sustenance. I'm not as deprived as you paint me, Sir Lauren. Like I said, I don't care if you're a vampire or not, Mr. Bink. I know that you've done wrong by your neighbors, and that's what you should answer for. My sheep! Uh... You've committed a crime, Mr. Bink. I can't ignore that. But I can't promise you that you'll be treated... Uh, that... Wait. But I can pre promise you that you'll be treated fairly and without prejudice. But first, we have one more thing to settle. Huh? Oh, right. There's also the dragon. Uh... Huh? Ah, I may have dozed off. All that human drama, you know. So exhausting. Well, Mr. Tag, time to settle things between you and Mr. Bakari. Okay? But, well, Bakari and vampires. Wow! Just wow! I don't know what to say! So Griffith is glad you exposed the vampire. Um, do you think vampires meet by tea and cookies and discuss vampire stuff? They must have shared hobbies. I'll have to ask Theo. Well, damn, at least the way forward is clear now. Okay. So... So number one seems kind of like the best. Leave him alone and you'll get along well. Or A dragon one or can two. be handy. Scare those who wish to harm your family or, like it or not, Mr. Bink... So... So does Mr. Bukhari. You need to settle with him too or there's no need to be afraid. Okay. Well, you don't want to do the last one because it's like saying that the dragon's going to be a threat. Mm-hmm. I'm curious if we could get, like, a, a truly optimum one by bringing Mr. Bakari back on and settling it, too. You mean Bink? No. Oh! Bink is, like, out of the yeah, Well, no, no, no. Oh, so does Mr. Bakari. Okay, so, yeah. So Bink Mr. had rights. Okay. Yeah, we know that Mr. Bakari was never the monster you had feared. Leave him alone and you'll get along well. Yeah. Hmm, okay. Let's go with number one. Bakari likes that. Miss, Mr. Tag, we know that Mr. Bakari was never the monster you had feared. Leave him alone, and you'll get along well. Okay, Mr. Dragon, do you have anything in mind? You know what I want, but I'm open to suggestions. Eh. Uh, oh, bomber. Sir Lauren, hand here, please. Okay, so Griffith is like, the way I see it, they need clear-cut boundaries. They're both smart enough to cross that bridge when they come to it. They'll always fear a dragon unless he's turned into a valuable asset. Let him defend them in exchange for peace. So, uh, they... Special stipulations, boundaries between yourselves, prepare a written agreement. That way... Written agreement probably doesn't have any meaning to a dragon. Split a small portion of land around the cave and give ownership to Mr. Bakari and let him do as he pleases with there. And Mr. Bakari will keep the cave and quiet on the condition that it'll help defend the plot if such a need arises. Do you think the last one's sufficient? Let's try number uh, number four. Okay. I like the sound of that. Oh, maybe I'll even put some nice uh, put up uh, put some nice fence and a warning sign. Um, well, I guess that's acceptable. Yep. So we're in agreement. Yes, I think we are. Thank you, Sword Lauren. All right, I'm glad we've reached an understanding. Once again, thanks for coming. Crackpot, hypocrite, king. <laughs> hey! This meeting is adjourned. And there we go. We sort of, like, completely booted the one guy, though. <laughs> well, I mean, he was a criminal, so...
Yep. That kind of took away his rights to the land. <sighs> now that everyone has left and we can talk, that went uncharacteristically well, don't you think? You can say that again, young master. Truth be told, I was honestly amazed by how you handled this ordeal. A satisfying conclusion without bloodshed? I just didn't think them hitting each other would do any side any good. Your father would be proud. I... Thank you, Griffith. Hey guys. I, uh... I just wanted to say that I'm thankful for what you've done. For smelly, squishy, noisy humans, you're alright. Don't mention it. By the way, your smell, it's different than what I remember, but you mentioned you were of House Lauren, right? What of it? Nothing. I just thought, well, aren't you fellows supposed to be dead? Huh? I knew a Lauren once. Upstanding chap, all regal, all diplomatic. Eyes like bronze, words like silver, that sort of thing. Funny that it was you who came to broker an agreement. He would have done just the same. Can you tell me anything more about that Lorne? His name was Elrin, Elrond, something like that. In my youth, I was a brazen, hot-headed lizard. People feared me, but he didn't. He offered me a place to stay. This place, in exchange for a share of my old hoard. And before you ask, no, I don't possess that hoard anymore. It wasn't much, but as I recall, he was desperate. Something about paying off a debt incurred by his idiotic ancestor. That sounds oddly familiar. He wanted to use that gold to marry into a wealthy clan from the land of Arlen, and go all robber baron on their precious resources, and he almost made it happen. Ironically, he died at sea while traveling to meet his would-be bride. They never secured the deal. What happened? I do not know for sure, though I remember hearing stories about a storm of the century. Poor Sod must have paddled right into it. <laughs> Destiny is one terrible tragedian. So, did you guys ever pay off that debt? To be honest, we were really hoping you could help us with that. Sins of the past still haunting the present. Poor, poor humans. All waxing poetic aside, I'm afraid I can't help you. I know nothing about your debt. Damn. However, I do know he was planning to visit his summer estate afterwards. Said he needed to show his ancestor's most prized possession to his brand new wife. A summer estate? Lady Elaine and Lady Gwendolyn have never found anything pertaining to a summer estate. Most prized possessions? Perhaps this is where the treasure vault was built. Sir Bakuri, do you know the location? Uh, sorry, boss. We'll have to investigate on our own then. You have our greatest thanks, noble Sir Bakuri. Good luck, little humans. The Grateful Dragon reveals the knowledge of yet another Loren ancestor, a Laren Loren. A man who was seeking the end of growing debt by marrying into a wealthy foreign family. More interestingly, however, a previously unknown factor is revealed. The Lauren Summer Estate. A supposed hiding site of House Lauren's most prized possessions. Alright. Well, we might as well go back to Escalia just because. Yay! Jurgen! I love That was dragons. fun. I have more dragon paintings. I wonder what would have happened if we had uh, just continued negotiating normally. Probably Without something significantly less fun. It would have been more difficult to yeah. please everyone. Yeah, probably would have been. Oh well. 